So Nicole, you're here. I've seen you. You're going to come up. Come on up. Um, so Nicole Curian is our next speaker. She's from Californians Against Waste. She's got a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Policy anal uh, Analysis and Planning at, from the California at Davis. She's a legislative director at Californians Against Waste. She serves as a lobbyist and coordinates the organization's legislative advocacy efforts, collaborating with stakeholders to research, create, and pass essential plastics, reuse, and environmental justice legislation. She most recently worked on Senate Bill 1046, which made California the first US state to ban produce bags. Her work has been featured in Vogue, Politico, and People, in addition to other uh, publications. Come on up. Where is she? There she is. All right, honey. So point the clicker right at Todd. And then she's got a timer for you counting down from 10 minutes. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Okay, cool. Great. <laughs> Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Curian. I'm the legislative director at Californians Against Waste. Um, we are an environmental nonprofit based in Sacramento, a couple blocks from the Capitol, and we focus on waste and recycling legislation. And so I am the legislative director and I track bills moving through the legislature. And uh, we also introduce and sponsor our own bills um, and coordinate how we will be engaging on um, all of the bills that fall under our mission. Uh, so here's a little bit about Californians Against Waste. Uh, uh, our, we are a nonprofit, as I said. Um, we identify, develop, and promote um, policy solutions uh, to pollution and conservation. Um, that Those problems pose a threat to public health and the environment. And here's um, us touring a recycling center and one of our fundraising events. Sorry, I'm still getting the hang of this. <laughs> So I'm just gonna go over a little bit about the California legislative timeline um, and how we engage with that. Um, the session runs from January um, to August or September, depending on the year. Um, there's a two year session to pass bills. So we are in the first year of a two year session. And if a bill doesn't finish out this process after it's introduced, it has till the end of the second year to pass. Um, and so if a, legislature, a legislator introduces a bill, if they're an assembly member or a senator, um, it has the opportunity to move through either one or two policy committees and then a fiscal committee if it, have a, if it has a fiscal impact to the state. Um, and then it moves to either the assembly or Senate floor. And after that, it passes and then moves to the opposite house and goes through the exact same process. And then after it's approved by both of the houses, and if it's amended in the second house, it has to go back to the first house. Um, and then it goes over to the governor who can either do nothing, sign the bill or veto it. And in, in the case of vetoing the bill, it dies. <laughs> so here's a little bit about how we engage um, with session. So before introduction, we examine what the political climate is and the budget. Um, we build on previous successes and analyze where we went wrong. Um, and then during session, we build coalitions of support and find out how various stakeholders can benefit. And so that's how we can build wide different groups, such as like businesses, local governments, and all kinds of people to support um, our legislation. And then we focus on pragmatic and equitable policy solutions. Um, and we believe that small steps can lead to big wins. And this year is a bad budget year, so bills that are more likely to pass this year are bills that have a lower fiscal impact to the state. So um, here's some accomplishments that um, we worked on in the last uh, session, the 2021-2022 year. So uh, we worked on some bills to address greenwashing. SB 343 and AB 1201 tackled greenwashing and prohibited manufacturers from calling their products recyclable or compostable unless they were likely to actually get recyclable, recycled or composted. And that includes um, using the recycling symbol on your products. And then AB 1857, AB 881 uh, reclassified the practice of burning trash um, or incineration and exporting mixed plastics overseas as disposal. Um, these two practices before um, used to count as recycling in the state. And so that incentivizes um, local governments to uh, continue these practices. 
some other accomplishments. So um, we expanded the California Bottle Bill Program with a SB 1013, um, and that now includes wine and spirits. And then AB 962, which passed in 2021, um, added support for the refillable options in the Bottle Bill. And then we passed a couple of electronic waste bills, SB 1215 and AB 2440. Both of them addressed um, batteries and battery embedded products. And then plastic pollution, um, as mentioned before, uh, I worked on SB 1046, which banned the distribution of plastic produce bags unless they were compostable, reusable, or recyclable. And that bill will take effect in 2025. So I'm just going to go over um, the 2023 bills um, that are relevant uh, this year. Um, and, oh, actually, I wanted to cover one, one more thing. So SB 54, as some of y'all might be aware, uh, was a huge plastics and uh, packaging bill that passed in California uh, last year. And it's known as the Plastic Pollution Prevention and Packaging Producer Responsibility Act. <laughs> And so this bill <laughs> creates a producer responsibility organization that is made up of manufacturers of covered materials. And so in the bill that's defined as packaging and foodware, um, and this PRO is required to meet source reduction and recycling goals um, for single use packaging and plastic single use foodware. And the PRO is required to develop a plan that's approved by CalRecycle and must pay for the cost of the implementation of this bill and a waste mitigation fee of $500 million per year over 10 years. And then some of the goal, <laughs> some of the goals um, under SB 54 um, include expanded polystyrene recycling, which some um, you know, regard as a de facto ban. Um, and that includes 25% by 2025, up to 65% by 2032. And then plastic packaging and foodware recycling uh, ramps up from 30% by 2028, up to 65% by 2032. And source reduction of plastic packaging and foodware of 10% by 2027, up to 25% by 2032. And this was a monumental bill uh, that passed, and a lot of parties were involved. Um, you can see this picture of the governor signing it. It was actually rushed through the process last year and passed in June. So some relevant bills for this year. Um, so some of the bills that we're sponsoring or co-sponsoring are labeled with our little symbol. So I, I have more details about those in, if you have questions at the end. Um, so AB 1290 is a bill that we've introduced with a couple of other co-sponsors with Assemblymember Luce Revis, and this tackles eliminating problematic plastics. Um, and this covers specific types of plastics and additives, um, and that includes PVC or PVDC, uh, PETG, which is a derivative of PET and can contaminate PET uh, recycling loads, um, carbon black, which is an additive that is carcinogenic and inhibits recycling, and oxodegradable additives. Oxodegradable additives um, are an additive that's added to plastics that can cause it to break down a little bit faster, and some manufacturers of plastics were using these additives to claim that their products uh, broke down, when in fact it just creates microplastics. Um, and then pigmented PET bottles other than opaque blue or green because they're just less recyclable. And then we're working on AB 1347, which just passed um, a policy committee yesterday, um, also known as Skip the Slip with Assemblymember Ting. This bill uh, bans BPA, BPS in uh, receipts and requires businesses... <laughs> and requires businesses to uh, provide consumers with the option of no receipt, an e-receipt, or a paper receipt. Um, AB 234 uh, by Assemblymember Bauer Cahan. We are um, engaging on this bill, but we are not necessarily supporting it. It has some problematic um, provisions in it, and I might be able to go into detail, um, but it addresses microplastics in leave-on and rinse-off cosmetics, um, and this is supposed to uh, sort of be in line with regulations that were recently passed in the EU, um, but there's some provisions in it that address degradable plastics and the timeline that we are trying to get fixed, and if, if we're able to fix those, we will support this bill. Then SB 552 by Senator Newman was a bill that we were uh, working on, and that bill requires um, reusable foodware for restaurants um, and dine-in situations. Um, unfortunately, this bill uh, is no longer alive. <laughs> yes, we will work on it next year, don't worry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and then SB 378 by Senator Gonzalez will ban expanded polystyrene foodware and coolers in parks and beaches. Um, AB 660 addresses food waste by streamlining expiration dates. Um, and this requires, yes, um, this requires uh, 
either a quality or a safety date that um, our FDA approved and prohibits consumer facing sell by dates that confuse consumers as to when they're throwing their food away. It's exciting bill It's my favorite one. Um, <laughs> And then AB 1628 with uh, Assembly Member McKinner, which, uh, allow, excuse me, um, requires uh, microfiber filters in washing machines. And then some bills addressing individual products. SB 707 by Senator Newman will create a clothing EPR program. AB 1059 by Assembly Member Friedman will ban fiberglass in furniture. Um, SB 560 by Senator Laird will uh, create an EPR program for compressed gas cylinders. And AB 863 by Assembly Member Aguiar Curry will create a EPR program for carpet. And then some bills addressing Toxics, um, emissions, and incineration. AB 1534 by Assembly Member Irwin will create a process to address landfill methane leaks. And then AB 1705, another one of my favorite bills. Uh, this was previously a moratorium on in municipal incineration in the state, um, but we've actually pivoted the bill recently. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, I, I changed the title. Never mind. It was. It used to be. Um, a setback zone from incineration, but now it's a moratorium on incineration. So actually last year we worked on AB 1857 and that bill will, uh, that bill uh, created a disincentive for municipalities to uh, use uh, incineration. And that actually eliminated the vast majority of the contracts for uh, the two municipal incinerators in the state. One is in Stanislaus County and one is, Long is in Long Beach. And so they are no longer economically viable, but there are other technologies um, that uh, advertise themselves as chemical recyclers, as some of you might be familiar with, and they are reinvesting in those incinerators. And so we're hoping that this bill will sort of stop them and continue to help close them down. Then SB 414 by Senator Allen. Oh, okay, I'm almost done. <laughs> uh, disincentivize the purchase of artificial turf containing PFAS. And then AB 246 uh, bans PFAS and menstrual products. And then here's some stuff we're working on with the California Bottle Bill again. Uh, uh, SB 535 by Senator Dodd uh, expands the Bottle Bill um, and fixes the processing payments to help recyclers stay open. And then AB 891 will uh, create a non-binding policy goal to support non-petroleum material in plastic bottles. Sorry, that was so, so many bills. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Yeah, Perfect. Stay here. Okay. Um, I find so much information. All right. <laughs> questions from the online group. David has a question. We have a question from Sherry Gong. Okay. Take this cue off the air. Oh, I'm going to not be the voice of God and pick another question. This is from Sosh. Have any other states introduced similar zero waste legislation to California? And are you connected with similar orgs in other states? Uh, yes, we work with a lot of different organizations um, in different states. And we're part of like a state strategy program where different uh, versions of bills are introduced in different states and we see um, how they went um, and then modify um, a model policy. Um, and California tends to be the most progressive. So um, a lot of times we pass legislation in California and then it's modeled off in other states. Cool. We've got a question here from Arthur. Sure. Uh, my understanding is that the Europeans have, have essentially stopped the use of, uh, of trying to pull organics out of mixed garbage, what's called mixed waste processing. And uh, that was uh, marketed to the people of Alameda County in uh, 2016, 2017, and an act approved by the by the agency. I don't believe they're doing that now at Davis Street Transfer Station. Is there any interest on that? But there are some other, other facilities run by operating uh, garbage companies to uh, basically encourage mixed waste processing that have been built and planned and apparently are operating Else, uh, other places in California. And the question is, has the legislature done anything to try and speak to that matter? Over. I'm sorry. I don't, the question no, is, I um, is CAW working on bills that will ban mixed waste processing? 
Um, I, I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, we, we work on, uh, legislation that supports diversion from the landfill. So organics programs and uh, recycling programs. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Cool. Can we, oh, yeah. There it is. Yes. Right here. Can we uh, uh, ban the balloon time uh, tanks of, of helium? Even if you break <laughs> them down, there is no recycler that will accept them. I think uh, a California Product Stewardship Council is working on some <laughs> tank that, bills. Uh, with that compressed gases thing imp impact? I, I don't know, actually. Do yeah, I can. I'll get back to you. <laughs> cool. Okay. Thank you so much. Good to see you, babe.